Hi, this is my mystery box video. This might be my first one. I mean, I mean by that there might be more of them if, if uh, this one works out okay. This is what's left of my comic book collection. It used to be really big. I collected from 1970 to maybe like 2010 that I sold in Path Dad. There's some stories behind that, but I'm not going to get into all that today. And I chose the smallest box of all the boxes because it's the first video. And if it goes horrifically wrong, at least it's a short box. And this is what's left over from my collection. Most of it's stuff that I either couldn't sell because I didn't want to give it away. Or, hey, it had some meaning. There's some memory attached to it. So I want to take a look. I have an idea of what's in each box. Let's take a look. Wow, it's been 40 seconds. All right, so it's going to be all mixed up. And, hey, this is a pretty good start right here. All right, I remember this. Now, I had a bunch of what-ifs. I probably had like 1 through 50. And I sold them. I kept this one because... I was probably in first grade when Gwen Stacy actually died, and that was a big deal. So this, when this comic came out, this was probably, what, 19, I don't know, I was probably in high school, 1980, that's about right. So there had only been maybe 260 Spider-Man comics. Nowadays, people don't really care about Gwen Stacy that much because she was only in maybe 100 comic books. She was 121 when she died. So nowadays, this might not mean as much to... Comic book fans, Spider-Man fans. All right, it's a cool comic, though. It's a good issue. This one, I did a, a comic book review on this. This is a funny issue. So if you're interested in a potentially funny what if, I do have a video where I review this one. All right, so we've got... All right, two Ultimate Spider-Man team-ups with Shang-Chi. I like these stories. I also have the Black Widow. I hope I have it somewhere, because that was my favorite one. I think that was number 14... So these two are really good. Okay, this might not work out as well as us. I gotta one-hand it because of the camera. All right, so we've got, this is a, a reprint of Frank Miller stuff. I sold, I had all those, I bought all those Frank Miller Daredevils when they came out. Sold them, got a really good price for them. And then here's another, let me just pull these marbles out here. So we'll look at DC stuff here. All right, so we've got, and, oops. We've got another trade paperback. This one's all right. Nothing noteworthy. If you like the Black Widow, this one's actually pretty good. I liked it. Two, two, different, two different styles of Black Widow stories. I liked these two. I mean, they're not... They're different from uh, Frank Miller's original version, but they're still really interesting. They're still entertaining. So, I don't know. I would... Uh, you can get these cheap. You know, I decided to keep them rather than just give them away. All right, what's next? We've got one more trade paperback. This is a re. I think this is a th originally a three issue miniseries. Matt Wagner did a. Did, he did Grendel, but he did a. I think he did a Batman and Grendel at one point. But uh, anyways, I like this a lot. And then sold all the Grendels. All right, what else? I'm gonna have to move it down. So I don't think I can pull everything. I got a little bit more room now. All right, so we've got. I've had this one since I was a kid. some of these down. All right, this might not work. What's a good angle? All right, it's that claw. It's a DC version of Conan. The guy who drew it, I think, actually drew or inked Conan's in the 1970s. I think he might have been John Basima's inker, maybe. I don't know why this is in here. I just... Oh, I know why. Yeah, there's different stories because it's got... I liked the artist, Steve Rude. Even though I sold a lot of the stuff, it's, you know, it's... And there's some speaking of Steve Rude, he drew that. That's good. Another Steve Rude Spider-Man that I don't... Oh, that's the first one. I don't know if I have the whole series. I think I went complete... Oh, man, I really... There's no order in these whatsoever. All right, so I've got a couple of Marvel fanfares right here. So this one has the Black Widow. I used to have the whole set. I guess I doubled up on these. These are really good, but since they focused on a different character, every issue, I can see why people didn't really buy them all the time. No Steve Rude, but this is anything on the back? No, okay. And I, this should have been good. I don't think it was, but it should have been. Speaking of good, now this is a reprint of the John Burns, or the Chris Claremont John Burns. And I think Arcade was originally in a Marvel team up that Chris Claremont wrote. I think John Burns drew, drew those as well. Oh, God, Star Wars. Who would have thought that? You know, the first Star-Lord appearance, I think, was in a Marvel magazine. John Byrne drew it. I think it was another Chris Claremont, John Byrne, before they really, really, really were popular. 
And that was great. And then you pick this up and it's just, oh. all right. Now I liked, oh yeah, I kept this one because I remember the Kree scroll war in uh, the Avengers. This is like from nine, number 90 to 96 where Neil Adams drew a few of them. They were just ah, great. One of those things you almost regret selling. But I read them so many times, I can kind of have them memorized. Yeah, I just saw another, I saw a YouTuber do a review of this a couple weeks ago. And then we've got the Nail mini series. And these are good. I like these a lot. I'm not, I don't even think I tried to sell these. What's up? All right, now this was, I remember I bought these in a stack. And I couldn't fit them into another. I didn't have another Marvel team up stack, so I just kept these out just because there's no way for me to sell them, and make any money. This one has water damage, but it's a cool comic. There's, I, yeah, there's no way for me to sell this in a group. Yeah, I couldn't put this. I had some Iron Man's, but this didn't fit in any sets. It's a cool issue. Cool issue. All right, now this I think I owned as a kid. It's a reprint of something from the 60s, and I liked the story when I was a kid, and I was looking through it a few years ago. Oh, it's not very good. Uh, kept it as a kid, not very good. Ugh, not very good, couldn't sell it. Couldn't sell it, nobody wanted it. You would think this is the number one. There's actually, there was a, another Chris Claremont, John Byrne, I think this came out, was like the second, the first part was a really weird ghost story in a Spider-Man annual. And then this one came out kind of like a semi-sequel. It's just, yeah, it's all right. Not good. As much as I like Bronze Age comic books, there was a lot of junk in that period. All right, now everybody buys Thors. These are not Kirby's. These are Basima Thors, and they're actually pretty good. I think this cover is detached. It's either a cover detached or there's like missing a, uh, I saw the glare. It's missing a um, something. Missing a stamp, maybe, missing a page. All right, these are okay. These are just tough to sell individually. I couldn't quite get the set. Couldn't quite get them in a set. Yeah, these are these are okay. This one's actually, I kind of like this one as a kid. It does have a Kirby cover. All right, I got a glare going on here, I'm sorry. Now this one, this was before, I mean, before uh, women were drawn provocatively. And usually Jane Foster didn't have a, a build like that. Especially when Jack Kirby drew So this was a little bit, this is before the 90s and pinup girls and everything. And All right, this was cool. I like that special, this is a lot of interesting, good stories now. I remember that one. I don't remember this at all. Um, I bought this only because it was the number one when I was in high school maybe. I had, I was also buying the kitchen sink magazines and I had the Warren magazines for a while and I sold them right before the uh, Spirit movie came out. Got a really good price. Sold a huge bulk of them, got a good price. And then the movie wasn't very good. All right, so I need more spirits. These are good, individual reads. And then I think, I betcha, yeah, I was always able to pick these up cheap whenever I saw them in a cheap box, a dollar box, quarter box, whatever. Always worth reading. And then, yeah, I know the, the portrayal, Ebony's, it's, yeah, I know, racist. I know, I know. I don't like it either, but besides that, really good. And this is where other people, modern artists and writers did their own interpretation of spirits. And some of these are good. Hit and miss. Hit and miss. If you can get them cheap. You can get them cheap, get them cheap, get them cheap. And, oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I loved this one as a kid, and then I realized there was a reprint of a uh, magazine from the late 1960s, but still good. All right, now, this one, I don't, these Conans, I don't think I tried to sell. This is a Gil Kane, if I remember correctly, but these, out of order, see, this is how messed up it is. All right, so these two Conans were a high, no, it was a college graduation gift. A friend of the family bought these for me. And that's unusual when someone buys you comics that are good and you don't have them. I didn't have these. How did you know I didn't have them? Thanks. So I kept them just because there's a, that, I mean, you got Conan, you've got Elric, 
and it's Barry Smith. I mean, it's 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 great. I had this one since I was a kid. I thought I'm not gonna sell this. I remember it. I used to have three copies of this, but I had a bunch of Captain America sets, so I was able to put the other two in a Captain America set and sell them. And this one wasn't worth it to sell, and I kind of like it. It's a cool cover. It's a great cover. Yeah, thanks for the glare. Yeah, I'm sorry. Next time I won't have the light on. I'll, I will uh, record at a time where I don't need it. Okay, these, I believe, I am the original owner. And the Defenders, it's a lot different from the Netflix show. But these just are not huge sellers. And then, this is not my original. I remember buying this at a comic show. Cheap. All right, this I might. This might be my own. I might have bought. Now these are reprints. It's not good. It's not a good sign for a uh, character when his first issue is all reprints. One is a one reprint is an early issue of the X Men, Jack Kirby drawn, where the X Men end up in the Savage Land. The second one, oh, it's a Daredevil. Duh, you can see the cover. And this is the same. The first one is a reprint of a Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man comic with Kazar. I think the second one's a Daredevil again. Yeah, Daredevil. All right. Avengers Annual. Great cover. The story's all right. The art's okay. Not great, but still. Um, reprints of, I think, Avengers 5 and 6. And then, hey, Jack Kirby, Fantastic Four. I think the cover is loose, and then there's that tear. And I just thought, you know, I'm not going to get much for this. I might as well keep it. It's a cool comic. I... I must have liked Kazar because this is my. I remember. I can tell that I am the original owner because the double. You know, when you're, I got cheap with some of these bags and boards, and so. And then it's out of order because Astonishing Tales was before the comic book, and then now this one. I could, I could probably get some money for this one individually, but I like it so. And I'm done selling them. I just like looking through them every once in a while. Okay, this is the front end. Front and back, front only, front only. And then we've got another Kirby. Now this is late in Kirby's run. You can tell he's either tired of doing the Fantastic Four or overworked because this is one of those where the panels are really big. You can read it in like three minutes. And the old Fantastic Four comic books weren't like that. Take like 20 minutes to read. Or maybe speed readers are faster. I'm not the fastest reader. I test really well, but I'm not the fastest reader in the world. All right, so you yeah. got Oh, man. I had a nice run of Nexus comics. Undersold them. I just... Oh, I should have... Just take up... Sometimes you just have to take up too much space. But, yeah. That's good. These are good. And then we're closing out. I recognize this. Okay, so we've got some Teen Titans. And then... I don't remember if that's the first series or second series. Now, in the 80s, early 80s, the... Teen Titans were meant to be like DC's version of the X-Men. So they got Marv Wolfman and George Perry, who worked for Marvel. So they took Marvel talent and uh, started revamped, rebooted. I think back in the 80s, the word was revamped, and now it's rebooted. So I know these are not in order, but these are some of the Titans from the 80s. And these are George Perez, and it's very, 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 very cluttered George Perez art. I liked it a lot, though, at the time. At the time, it was, it was cool. It was, and then, yeah, that's a nice, some nice covers. And then, this is a good series here. A good storyline. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. And then it all ended in, a, in an annual. And then, this annual is also, whoops, I think this one I could probably, if I was patient, I could probably do something with these Titans if I put them together. But I kind of like him. And then, okay, this one. This should have been a really good comic book. And I didn't really care for it all that much. Because yeah, this is, like I said earlier, the Teen Titans was supposed to be the DC's version of the X-Men. You put them together. Well, you see, this is where, I remember my memory of this is buying it in college, but then... The date is like 1982, I think, when I looked at it last time. Where is it? I'm probably staring at it. There it is. Yeah, 1982, so I would have been in high school. The thing is, with with Dark with Dark Side and Dark Phoenix, you'd think, and then Walt Simonson drawn it, 
and I think Chris Chris Claremont writing it, you'd think it would be good. Maybe it is. The only thing I remember enjoying, I thought the story was boring. The only thing that I thought was interesting was um, the interaction between characters. Like right there, you know. She's kissing him to learn the language. <laughs> and then Kitty's mad. Yeah, it's, yeah, the, the hussy and Peter's enjoying it too. We're all sorry about the sort of stuff where absorbs languages through physical contact. You know, so stuff like that art is good. It's a little cluttered. A lot of word balloons sometimes, maybe unnecessary. But I don't know. I just thought this, this it's not bad. You just expect it to be great. I don't know. Maybe I should try it again. All right, so this is my mystery box. Now it is no longer a mystery box. And if there's any individual issue that you would want to, uh, that you want me to review, let me know. Cause I, the, some of these look like they actually could make for an interesting review video. And uh, I might, I might uh, do a repeat. I need to do something with that paint. Um, do another longer box. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if there are any comic books that you want me to do a review about. And uh, thanks for watching.